Spain needs to really, really improve the road infrastructure in this country. So that's number one. Then the number two um, challenge I will mention is the issue of um, security. And when we're talking about security, it's both ways. Because, you know, some people are using it for evil uh, purposes, both the logistic business themselves and the people that are um, that are using the services. Uh, and we've seen so many situations. I, I, I heard of a case of um, a man. He told me that, you know, he was um, to go to Abuja and, you know, to make some money. He decided to carry some pasu, you know, not knowing that the pasu, what is inside the pasu was actually, I think, cocaine, a drug substance. He had moved all the way from Lagos to Kogi State before he was, you know, stopped by, I think, the NDLA, and they discovered that he was carrying a drug. The guy said he was in prison at NDLA in Kogi State for more than two weeks. And what saved him was that he was able to, you know, uh, let them lead them to the people that gave him the, and they realized that he didn't know anything about it. He was just doing his business. So imagine, you know, something like that. Somebody carrying loads, and you know, you carry load for somebody, and you now realize that what you are carrying and is, is an illegal substance. So these are the issue with security. You know, it's more than that. It's not just carrying an illegal substance. It, it can even be killed in the process. You know, we've seen a situation where some people will say they need, you know your service and you get there only for you to disappear and things like that. So the issue of insecurity is a major um, issue that government needs to look at and see how they can protect the people in the industry as well as, you know, the people that are also, you know, are engaging these services. Then the number three issue is internet. You know, because to make this uh, work uh, a better work, that there, there, there need to be a better uh, communication gadgets. Because you know, to hire for services and all those things, you know, you 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 need internet. And internet, you know, this logistic business and internet accessibility are and you know they go hands in hands. So our internet facility, you know needs to improve and i'm sure you know when you when you look at the people providing the internet the major problem they two are having is electricity because they need electricity to power their you know um all their stations and most of the time you know we don't have um, constant supply of electricity and you know they put generator and things like that but you know there's always the issue of armed robbery and you know not really armed robbery stealing and all those things and then the, the, the amount of diesel and all those things they are using. So it's not really making the internet um, facilities in this country to, uh, to, be, to work seamlessly. All right, Dr. Ajumon, um, we are a solution-based uh, television house. So um, after, prof after, you know, highlighting the challenges, we also see the need to also prefer solution. What do you think can be done to curb most of these uh, this highlighted challenges? And what policies do you think the government can put in place to ensure that things go well? Uh, on the issue of the um, road network, what well, government is trying these days, um, and you know, it, it's, you, you can't really blame government because it's the resources that is available that they can use. What, they don't have, you know, you cannot give what you don't have. And, you know, that's the problem we're having. And, you know, a lot of um, innovation is going on into providing this um, road network in the country. You know, I love what um, um, Raji Fashola did, you know, with works before the end of the last administration. You know, the, he came up with a new, so many innovations. The idea of, okay, uh, complaints, you know, go take some roads, repair it so that you can get tax on the day. You know, the Shuku calling Chinese complaint to come in, you know, take some roads, maintain it. So they, they brought in a lot of ideas. And I believe, you know, this at present administration should, you know, forge ahead in the idea of, you know, what the last administration has laid down and, you know, 
put so many things in place. Look at a papa, um, a papa who should be um, um, or Jota Road. See the way Dangote and um, and the sort. I think it was purely Dangote. Lay and they lay a solid foundation for those low roads because you know they first use you know iron cast, then put um, concrete before they now put the tar. So that's a good road, and I think this should continue. So on the issue of road, government should just see it as a very very important uh, issue that must be given utmost attention. Then on the issue of the security. You see, most of these complaints that are operating, they need to be registered and, you know, properly registered in such a way that, you know, the activities can be monitored. Look at the issue of, you know, um, the guy I said was arrested in Kogi State. If it's a registered complaint and there are uh, guides, you know, there are rules and regulations guiding them. If something like that happened and he has not violated any rules laid down by them, you know, all he needs to have done is, okay, this is what I am. I am doing my own business. So I don't know, you know, these are the people that ordered me and, you know, they will release him and pick the offender, not, you know, um, keeping him behind bars for more than two weeks. At the end of the day, they collected his money, collected his phone and all those things. So, you know, there should be proper rules and regulation guiding the operation of this logistic um, business. So on the issue of security, that's an aspect. Then also, you know, the, the security outfits in this country, you know, they need to do better uh, in in their active in their money in in their in their securing of the country. You know, getting to know what are the problems facing us, what are the things that they can do. You know, to combat all these problems. I think the security outfits, you know, need they need to up their games and do better than what they are doing now. Then on the issue of um, um, internet, you know, uh, what I identified there is the issue of um, having a, a, um, a good supply of electricity. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, when it comes to electricity, I, I, I baffled. Because this country up to now, we are not generating more than 30,000 megawatts. A country over 220 million generating 30,000 megawatts. It's, it's an aberration. We are not supposed to be generating anything less than 100,000 uh, 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 100, megawatts of electricity in Nigeria. So for us to be operating on, you know, at times we say the, the what they call is down. The, the, the national grid is down and we will come back to like 2,000 megawatts. You know, all these things, you know, need to be looked at critically and ensure that, you know, because there is no way we can grow in this country if we don't really, really pay attention, especially to electricity um, generation, electricity supply in this country. And, you know, another problem is the amount that people are ready to pay for electricity. And um, we... If we want good things, we should be ready to pay for it. So that is my um, idea when it comes to the issue of the um, logistic business in this indeed, country. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much. Now, um, we know that this particular sector is uh, majorly run by the private, uh, by private individuals. Probably uh, that's the reason why there is not so much governmental involvement. However, what would you say about... Uh, collaboration, like government collaborating with this uh, uh, private uh, enterprises uh, in order to, you know, overcome all these challenges and unlock even more opportunities to the people? It is actually the government business to ensure that, you know, the businesses in the economy is working well. So th th there is no other, you know, collaboration other than government doing their business. It is the business of the government to see that, you know, doing business in this country is, is going on well. Because if the businesses are not working well, there is no way government can generate its revenue, you know, efficiently. It is when business is working well that the economy will grow. And when the economy is growing, that is when, you know, what government is going to collect as tax is going to improve. So anything ampering, you know, 
uh, businesses is hampering the economic growth. You know, you know, reducing the rate at which you know people can enjoy what you can produce in the country. So, go, I'm sure government knows that you know businesses must work well. So there is nothing like uh, partnering. Government should do their duty to ensure that you know all these things that I have highlighted are taken. You know, because it's not just for the um, logistic business; it is for the country. So whatever government is doing is not as if it is particular to the logistic business. If the internet is working well, it's not only in the logistic business that they will enjoy it. Even in the education in, um, industry, where I belong to, we need internet. You know, uh, a seamless, I you know, um, internet that, that 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 is fast, not just you know um, the one that we are in, that we are having now. So you see, it is not something that you know government needs to start doing any um, private partnership or whatever. Government should see, you know, all these issues we are talking about, good roads. It's not only logistic business is affected, it's affecting all enterprises in the country. So they are the issues that government should face, you know, with utmost uh, what they call importance to ensure that things are working seamlessly in the country. Yes, of course. And the government is looking in that direction already. Reports have it that uh, the government is looking to get involved in this logistics uh, industry and see how to make it better. So now, um, what would you say of the future of this industry going forward? Yes, how would you envision the future of logistics in Nigeria, considering you know, how, how far we've come technologically, talking about technology now, the use of AI and all of that, how far do you think we have come in that regard and how far can we go? Um, if you see what is happening now, we are still, you know, far behind, you know, the world, what the world is doing when it, in terms of logistic business, because, you know, we are still using human beings, you know, either through bicycle, motor, power bike, you know, there are some places that, you know, transportation there are not all that easy that we need, you know, to make use of, you know, um, AI such as, you know, places where you have to pass through maybe mountain, places where you have to pass through, pass through water, you know, you can deploy, you know, um, what's this thing called? That, you know, you just, for instance, now you want to pass drug across to a place, you know, there are some diseases that, in fact, the people that have it, you know, they, they are not so, supposed to be in contact with human beings. So we, I'm sure in the near future, we we'll see a situation where robots, you know, will be delivering, you know, things like drugs and things like that, and where we are going to be making use of um, aero um, uh, gadgets, you know, to pass things across so that, you know, the, the time frame for when the thing is passed to where it gets to will be as, you know, as short as possible. So there are still a lot of developments, you know, to go. And when you look at all this logistic business, it's working well only in big cities, it still needs to be developed across even rural areas. Farmers might be needing fertilizers, things like that. You know, we, we need to, for instance, you know, maybe in the village or in some rural area, there might be some um, animal farm that need some drugs for their animals urgently. So there should be ways, you know, to quickly pass these things across. I can see in the near future, you know, in this country, where helicopters, you know, will be delivering parcels, you know, as, you know, taking the shortest time frame, you know, to get things across. We will be making use of robotics, you know, to deliver things. We will be making use of aerospace, you know, helicopters and, you know, all sorts, you know, to do businesses um, in the logistic. But today, I will say, you know, please, we are doing well. But I'm sure in the near future, you will see that, you know, we are going to do far, far better than the way we are doing today. Yes, you, um, you mentioned the use of ro uh, robots and all of that in delivering of, of goods and products to customers. Now, wouldn't that further reduce um, the amount or the level of, uh, increase rather, the level of employment in Nigeria? 
I mean, we already have that issue. No, you, know, uh, you, you, you see, thinking. every aspect have their own role to play. There are some things that, you know, you might be using robotics to deliver. You know, I told you that in a situation where, you know, you, you, you want to get a, a drug across to somebody that has a, a kind of disease that is contagious, it is better, you know, we use robotic in that instance. Then in a situation where, you know, you want to quickly get something across, you know, a terrain that are not, you know, smooth, a hilly, mountainous or water area. Those are the areas, you know, that I am um, advocating that we can be making use of aerospace and, you know, situation where, you know, somebody having a contagious uh, um, diseases is what I am, you know, uh, asking for robotic to deliver, you know, the injections or whatever, you know, the person needs. Um, so everybody has their own to, to play. But believe me sincerely, you know, looking forward, there are so many things that um, technology is going to take over. And that's part of the uh, development. But the truth is this, that does not mean that, you know, um, there will be work you know, that, you know, the, the, the technology will be taking people's work. Because all these things will still be powered by human beings. And, you know, once you are talking about machine or whatever you call it, machine needs to be repaired, machine needs to be maintained. And, you know, so definitely people, you know, it, it's going to create more job opportunities in other fields. And everybody needs to be forward-looking. Once you know that you are in a field that might be taking over in the near future, you know, by technology, you should know early enough and start asking yourself, in what area should I quickly tilt towards? You don't wait until your job is taken completely from you before you realize that you don't have job again. Look at, there was a time in this country that the typist and all those things is the order of the day. But today, if you have not developed yourself to make use of computers, you will be rendered jobless. But for to, to those that see it coming and quickly train themselves in how to use computer, you know, they convert it. So, you know, we still the work of a typist, but they don't call them typists again. So, you know, they are now secretary or whatever you want to call them. So all we need to do is, there are so many jobs in the near future that will be taken over by technology. So we need to identify that early enough and start planning, you know, towards that. But that technology will not, you cannot, you know, um, affect technological development because, you know, you are saying that people will not, it's going to take up people's job. No, that's not the right way to go. So much, uh, Dr. Ajoan. We'll go on a quick break now. When we return, we'll continue this conversation. Thank you very much. My name is Ola Tunji Shoti Miri. I'm a performing artist and, uh, you know, television radio presenter and a university lecturer, Unilag. Keep watching Soap News. Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Black, Africa's finest music comedian, and you're watching Soap News. If you're not watching Soap News, I pity you, but keep watching Soap News. Hello everyone, my name is Timila Kolo, and you're watching Soap News. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Wisdom Uluwa Shen Okoko, co-founder of Orbit Africa Properties. I'm live at Souk News. Guys, keep watching Souk News. For everything that concerns business, economy, politics, news. Souk News is your station. Latif Jakonde. Born Latif Kayode Jakonde in the Ekbetedu area of Lagos Island, Lagos State, on July 1929. He studied at the Lagos Public School at Enowa, Lagos Island, then at Bonham Memorial Methodist School, Port Harcourt, King's College, enrolled at Elisha Grammar School, where he edited a literary paper called The Quarterly Mirror. Jack Onde began a career in journalism in 1949 with the Daily Service and joined the Nigerian Tribune in 1953. The owner, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, appointed Jack Onde editor-in-chief of the Tribune in 1956. 
Jack Omde established John West Publications in 1975 after leaving Tribune and began to publish the Lagos News. He served as the first president of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, NPAN. Jack Onde ran for election as executive governor of Lagos State in 1979 on the Unity Party of Nigeria platform. His administration was effective and open and implemented the cardinal policies of his party. He introduced housing and educational programs targeting the poor, building new neighborhood primary and secondary schools, and providing free primary and secondary education. He gave poor people's children education, and many of them are now very prominent in the society today. Jack Onde established the Lagos State University and constructed over 30,000 housing units. After the military takeover in 1983, Jack Onde was charged, prosecuted, and convicted of treason and later pardoned. He served as Minister of Works under the Sani Abacha military regime. He died in Lagos on February 11, 2021. Latif Jakonde was the first civilian governor of Lagos State. Latif Kayode Jakonde, Souk Enlightenment. Welcome back. You're still watching Business Insight and we are discussing the role of the logistics industry in the growth of businesses in Nigeria. And we still have with us our guest, Dr. Olusheye Ajunwa. Ms. Dr. Ajunwa, are you still with us, please? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. Um, now, let's um, speak to security, not um, in, in the context you, you initially spoke about, but in a new context. How, uh, what regulatory policies should be put in place to ensure the safety of cargoes, basically, and, uh, you know, to mitigate theft? Because we see uh, people who, um, you know, these uh, dispatch riders and all of that, they face different uh, risk of their, of their, uh, tri uh, of their, of their um, tricycles or whatever getting, you know, stolen and all these other factors. What policies can be put in place to ensure that these people who, you know, uh, who operate in this industry are safe from harm? Um, actually, you know, uh, when it comes to business, you know, and security, security or insecurity, it's, it's a big problem in this country. And, but for now, what I can recommend uh, is that, number one, you know, packaging of parcels should be looked at critically because if the packaging is not appropriate, in the process of um, moving a parcel, you know, once you are entering into pot holes, you know, man holes, elephant holes, the parcel can get damaged. So we need to look at the, the packaging of the parcel to ensure that, you know, the packaging can take care of the parcel in such a way that no matter you know, the terrain of the road, the parcel will be appropriately you know, taken care of. So we need to look at the uh, parcel packaging. That's number one. Then number two, on the issue of the insecurity, I think insurance have a role to play in that aspect. You know, stealing of... Um, the, the gadgets, you know, the people use, such as their power bike, um, also the damaging of the goods too. So insurance has a role to play. If insurance is doing their work, you know, if any of these things happen, then uh, the insurance will have to pay, you know, the damages. Then not only um, the insuring of um, the commodity, but they must also insure life insurance of the people that are driving this logistic business. You know, maybe the person driving the Okada or driving the uh, bicycle, 
you know, we need to insure their life. And once the insurance are taking over this thing, I am sure, you know, they are going to put policies in place that will safeguard the life of these people because they know once anything happens to any of them, they are going to pay a lot of money. And not, in order not to pay the money, they will ensure that, you know, there is adequate security, you know, provision of adequate security to ensure that these people's life, you know, are, are safeguard. All right. Um, now, what um, you earlier spoke about uh, security, about how um, dispatch riders deliver products that are not supposed to be delivered, you know, to uh, individuals. Now, couldn't there be some, some sort of data uh, analysis if we have the data of everyone involved, you know, in like every industry, every company, every dispatch uh, company, every logistic company, you know, has a database of each person, each rider, and all of this, wouldn't such a situation not be uh, avoided? You are right on that. And that's why I said, you know, all these logistic, all these, you know, local logistic businesses, are they all registered? Because we need to start from there. If they are not registered, you know, how can you get a database of, you know, companies that are not registered? So, you know, government needs to do a lot of things in this area. You know, and the first um, stage is to ensure that there is a proper law guiding the operation of this logistic business. Once the proper law is in place, it is out of that law that we show that, okay, if you want to be operating, you know, a logistic business, you must be registered. In fact, all, you know, um, all duties, all, you know, all pass through that you pick must be registered. For instance, you know, there must be a, a, a data site where as you are picking a, a, an object or whatever, you know, you log it in. As you are delivering, you log it in. So that if anything happens, once any you know, law agents, you know, catch you, they realize that, oh, you are only doing your normal business, a legitimate business. Because see it, go to the data site, you will see, I log it. I'm coming from Lagos. I'm going to Abuja. And this is, you know, when was it locked in? You will see it and realize that, okay, you are still within the time frame of moving from Lagos to Abuja. It's the same duty that you started in Lagos that you have not ended, that you are in Kogi for. So these are all the things that government needs to look at and ensure that there is proper documentation. But the starting point is all these logistic businesses must be registered. Very well, very well. Now let's look at the um, economic impact of uh, d different factors such as inflation, currency fluctuation, and you know all of this. Does it? Um, of course, all of this affects the demand, the customer demand for these services. You know how can policymakers basically ensure that this challenge is, you know, is looked into and you know somewhat made a little bit better. You see, when it comes to the issue of you know what is happening in the economy currently now, you know it is something that is going to normalize with time. You, you know we are really, really in a difficult time now, and it's because of the price of the petrol, which is affecting you know transportation and logistic business. Anyhow, you want to uh, look at it. And uh, I, I am not going to call on government, you know, to come in in this area because. If you are advocating, what do you want to advocate government to do to start to start subsidizing again? No, it is something that with time everything would normalize, and um, you know, by the time we are paying, uh, we are enjoying, you know, this policy of um, liberalization and all those things, we will realize that you know it is, it is you know an headache that is you know that is short lived. So for for now, you know. I don't see any way with which government can help when it comes to that. Um, it is something that all the businesses are facing. And, you know, we, we, we are hoping that very soon. And when I'm saying very soon, that soon can be as soon as one year, you know, 12 months or even more. But with time, you know, if we continue on this uh, path that this present administration has started, it's just a matter of time before we start again. But for now, 
um, I think the road is rough and everybody we have to understand that and you know tighten we have to tighten our belts. So um, Dr. Ajumo, as an economist um, you know uh, professional what would you advise do you think this is a business people should further venture into do you think this is a very laudable business that you'd advise other people to get involved in? You see, when it comes to business, business is not something you advise people to go into. People will catch the cruise the way they want it. So you don't advise people that go into this business. Anybody that is there, you know, we know whether, oh, this is the right business for me or this is not the right business for me. People are waking up on daily basis that are going into that business and people are leaving. So whether you will go for it or not, it has to do with whether it is right for you or not. But definitely, you know, it, it, it is a lucrative business if you can, you know, do it well. It's a lucrative business. Those that are there, you know, anybody that feel like going in there, you know, they can go and speak with the people there so that they will know the challenges they are facing and, you know, how they are making it. That's my, but for me to say, oh, go into this business. No, no, no. I, I don't do that. You are the one that will catch the juice. If you oh, see right. it as something that you really want to go into, fine. But if you don't see it as something you need to go into, fine as well. So it is the business people that will decide, you know, the kind of business they want to go into. Okay. Um, now, compared to other climbs, you know, this same industry in other, other parts of the world, do you think Nigeria is doing well enough? And are there any, you know, blueprints or templates that we could duplicate here in Nigeria? Actually, when it comes to, you know, whether there is a blueprint or whatever, um, I would say Nigeria is not doing badly. And we are not in the best of them. Um, and we all know why we are not, you know, are doing better than the way we are doing. It's because of all those challenges, you know, I have enumerated. And I believe, you know, in the near future, we'll do far, far better than the way we are doing today. But, you know, in terms of how we are doing, I think, you know, we are, we are, we are not doing badly. We are not doing badly at all. Indeed. Uh, so uh, we'll be a rounding of the show very shortly, but I would like to hear your final thoughts on this topic, sir. You know, my, my, logistic business is a business that, you know, I'm happy with what is happening, you know, in it in Nigeria now. Because, you know, uh, I, I am in Lagos and I can see what is actually happening. Uh, the, the other time, you know, we are doing some research in, uh, across the whole country. I was the one to, uh, to facilitate the South South and, you know, what we were using was Portacot. You know, to get all the materials across to Portacot was so seamless. And, you know, I was able to um, take care of the Portacot, you know, while I was in Lagos and, you know, it, 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 it's something that, you know, when I look at what happened, I was really, really happy about it. It's, things were working seamlessly. And I believe that, you know, if all those things have highlighted that are the issues are taken care of, you know, because when you look at Nigeria population, we, our population have not started slowing down. It will, you know, it will take a while before our population will start slowing down. So when you're looking at a population of about 220 million, that is going to be 250 million by 2030. You will know that you know this is a business that is going to be lucrative or that will do well in the near future. So I'm happy with the way you know the business is growing. I'm happy with where we are, and I'm sure that in the near future, you know, we are going to do far far better than the way we are doing now. Yeah, indeed. Thank you so much, Dr. Ajuma, and I I hope. You know, uh, government officials or policymakers will get to watch this so they can uh, look into these challenges highlighted and prefer solution for uh, a better Nigerian economy. Many thanks to you, Dr. Olushaye uh, Ajuma. He is an economist, uh, economics lecturer at the University of Lagos and a research fellow at the Institute of Nigeria China Development Studies, also at the University of Lagos. Many thanks for joining us on the show, sir. On the show, sir.
Thank you. Well, thank you. And on that note, we draw the curtain on Business Insights today. Business Insight makes a return tomorrow, same time, same station. Do not miss it. I'm Adesua Iramosele. Thanks for watching.